Okay, IED, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to start activity 1.3.3, which is constraining a sketch. And we've been making sketches in Onshape, but you've been looking at the sketches as just a way to make an extrusion or make a shape. And uh, what we're going to try to start thinking about sketches today is we're going to kind of, I think the best way to describe it is like big brain mode for sketches in general, because sketches are so much more than just making a shape and then extruding it. Uh, you can do lots of different transformations and applications to these shapes, and as the constraints are put on appropriately, you can create uh, scalable sketches, you can create uh, sketches that are very easily modified. Uh, there are a lot of ways that you can create what we call non-destructive workflow, which means that you don't have to like go back and erase everything in order to just make a couple of changes on your shapes. And going through a specific design process, we'll be able to learn how to do that. So we're going to learn the basics of like how you would actually constrain a sketch. We're going to go through this. This is a pretty long assignment. I think it's got like 33 different things to it. So I'm going to just try to go through this in detail and kind of go through it. Digital students, uh, you will be responsible for some of this and all of it, anything that says Fusion 360 this year, you're going to do in on shape because we're not doing Fusion 360 this year. We're doing on shape this year. So any, don't don't freak out and be like, I don't understand what Fusion 360 is. It's because we're using on shape like we've been doing for the entire year. You know, don't freak out. It's okay. Um, okay, so here we go. They kind of talk about uh, design requires constraint. And that's actually a really important concept is because if you are designing something, you're designing something to specifically do a certain thing. And that means that there are uh, constraints automatically applied to it. Like if you say, I want a pet, and then let's say, well, you're gonna just get any pet in the world? No, then you would, you would sum it down and you would say like, well, I want a dog. Uh, then, you know, that would be a constraint to the system of what you're actually trying to, to make or, or what you're trying to buy. When you're trying to make something, you're automatically applying constraints to the system and those constraints are going to be very helpful to you. Uh, they make your life easier. The constraints don't make your life harder. Um, so there are, let's see here. Um, you can read through most of this part yourself. I know whenever it talks about parametric models, that might actually be worth doing a click over. Uh, a parametric model would be something where the sides are like based off of each other. So instead of saying I have a side that's two and I have another side to a rectangle that's four, you would say I have one side that's a length uh, five and the other one is that length divided by two. So one of them is related to the other one. You would have like some base dimension and everything would be based off of that one. And there are several programs that can automatically calculate and move things into a parametric mode. Um, and whenever those happen, constraints are like absolutely necessary. Um, but there are two types of constraints that can be applied when building the geometry of a 3D solid CAD model, dimensional constraints and geometric constraints. You use geometric, ge uh, dimensional constraints in CAD when you applied dimensions to geometric primitives, when you dimension sketches, and when you defined dimensions of features. In this activity, you'll learn about geometric constraints and how a combination of geometric constraints and dimensional constraints can fully constrain model geometry. So we're going to basically kind of start talking about constraints and how to actually get those to go. So we're going to go through these numbers. Uh, number one, investigate the geometric constraints available in the sketch environment in your CAD program. So what we're going to use is we're going to use <gasps> on shape, not Fusion 360, and we're going to just try to become familiar with it. So the way that we're going to do this is um, we're going to think about a few things to ourselves. Okay, so like in class, we'll talk about it with our partners. Uh, virtual students, you're going to have to think about it yourself. And in this case, Google is definitely your friend, especially if you are doing um, virtual geometry. You might not have actually gotten to this stuff yet. So Google is really going to help you on that one. And I highly encourage you to Google these uh, these things. You're not actually writing this part down. It's for, it's not, this, this part I'm not grading, but like what's the difference between two things that are parallel to each other and two things that are collinear to each other? 
what's the difference between two circles that are tangent to each other and two circles that are concentric to each other? That's an important concept. Like, can you have two circles that are tangent to each other? What does tangent mean? And what does concentric mean? Google those terms and look up those terms and see what tangent means and see what concentric means. Uh, can the tangent constraint be applied between a line and an arc? Uh, so basically the tangent constraint will actually take two things and actually make them uh, tangent to each other. So you might want to Google tangent and find out what that is. Uh, what does the coincident constraint do and how do you use it? Okay, so like uh, normally, like, especially like in Onshape, if you just put your mouse over the button uh, for the coincident constraint, it'll kind of show you what to what to do. And I will show you how to do that right now. So let's go ahead and I'll sign into Onshape. And we'll just make a really simple sketch environment because I think that's what it's going to have us do next. And while that's loading up, I'm going to go ahead and move back here because see in part three it says create a sketch of a concave polygon in CAD using only the line tool. So that's what we're going to do for part three. We're only going to we're going to create a sketch using uh, just the line tool. Okay, and it says that uh, we're going to be really careful not to start this at the origin. Notice that the origin is not a part of this. So I'm going to create a, I guess we're going to do this in practice. So I'm going to go to practice and I'm going to create a new document. We're going to call it uh, constraint practice. And we'll go ahead and load that up and get the sketch going. I'm going to do the same thing that I do every single time that we have CAD going. We're going to start our three-dimensional uh, X, Y, and Z plane. I'm going to hit sketch and I'm going to hit the top view and then I'm going to move to the top view. Okay, so I can see my origin right here. I don't want to put that concave polygon on the origin itself. So let's see here. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sides and it's concave. So we're going to go how about, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. There we go. Looks like a genuine shape to me. Uh, and <laughs> that would just definitely be some kind of polygon. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, I think we're good. It's close enough, close enough. All right, so how would you describe this polygon in geometric terms? Well, they kind of already said that it was a concave polygon. It's concave because it ends up caving in. It doesn't, like, push out. Okay, so there's a section of the polygon that actually has this, like, divot inside of it. The regular polygons that you normally think of when you think of, like, a hexagon or a pentagon, uh, things like these. Let me go ahead and just pull a shape up here. It's like this. This is a con vex polygon because all of the sides are actually pushed out uh, and be consequently all of the sides of the polygon are greater than 90 degrees so that makes it a convex polygon so if you look at mine some of these are above 80 degrees like this guy but this one right here is did i say 80 uh, some of these are above 90 degrees like this guy but this one and this one are definitely not right angles they're they're acute angles so because of that this is going to be some kind of convex polygon you could also call this since it's an eight-sided polygon you could call it an octagon too if you wanted to uh, that's a couple of different ways that you could describe this polygon and it says all right let's see here um how would you describe it need help blah 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 uh sometimes it's asking you to go ahead and remove constraints so let's go ahead and check and see if we actually have any constraints we can click on our shape and we can see uh, anytime you move over a line you can see that sometimes constraints will form and see if i can actually find any um looks like I'm okay right now in terms of constraints. Um, oh, there's one. Okay, so like, see this one? This is a coincident constraint. And that's because this line and this line meet up at this point. They're coincident to each other. You can see all of the different constraints uh, up on the top right up here. If you click on the line, there's all sorts of different constraints that we can apply. And these these get into various levels of big brain mode. Some of them are really easy, like a horizontal constraint will always be left to right. So the bottom part, we could actually put a horizontal constraint on it and it'll lock it in place. It won't go anywhere. 
Uh, coincident constraints is ones where they have to meet up together to each other. So all of these constraints can be added to a sketch, and all of these constraints can also be subtracted away from a sketch. Uh, if you wanted to add a constraint to a sketch, what you would do is you would click on the button, and let's say that we wanted these two lines to be equal to each other. So I would hit the equal constraint, and then I would just click on this line, and I would click on this line, and their links would automatically become equal to each other. And it would change the sketch to where this was true, and everything else that I had already made was true as well. So now these two are equal to each other, and you can see this constraint pop up. Okay, these constraints basically mean, hey, this is equal to each other. In Onshape, if I want to get rid of a constraint, all I have to do is just click on the box that has the constraint and hit the backspace button or the delete button. I think the Chromebooks have backspace, so you'll want to hit the backspace button. Okay. Move a constraint. Uh, part four, select each line in your sketch and one at a time, drag it with your mouse. Describe the behavior of the sketch in general, when a random line is dragged, or drug. Uh, number five, select each coincident point independently and drag it with your mouse. Notice they didn't say line. They said take a point and drag it with your mouse. Describe the behavior uh, in each sketch, and in general, uh, when a random point is dragged. Uh, number six, undo your changes by using Control-Z and return to the original sketch you created. Uh, finish your sketch and then extrude the shape. Okay, so we're going to finish our sketch that we made. Boop, and then we're going to extrude the shape. Something tells me we're probably going to end up using that later. doesn't matter how big. Let's just go with one inch. Keep it easy. So boop, there he goes. Um, I don't know. This kind of looks like some kind of upside down Oklahoma or something like that. I'm not really sure what's going on there. But whatever. Let's go back. So uh, name and save your design. Okay, so we're going to end up using this later. All right, and um, I think after you try that out, I think this is going to be what we're going to do for part one. And then uh, we'll have a part two up there as well, because a lot of these are really big and they're kind of split up into different sections. And I think if I give, like, especially this one, this one has like 30-ish tasks to do. So we'll break it up into parts. And this, uh, once you extrude the shape like that and go through the different things and describe the behavior of each, that'll be what you'll turn in. You'll turn in your describing the behavior. So what I'm going to want y'all to do is I'm going to want you to do one through eight, and that's what we're going to turn in for part one. Thanks, and we'll talk later.